Look at the rod just cork. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is the Canadian Angle. One of the hottest topics in fishing these days is front-facing sonar, also known as live imaging. In this video, we're going to talk about the good and the bad of this amazing technology while chasing black crappies on the Canadian Shield with my good buddy Josh McFadden. Well, early season, not enough ice for an ATV. We're doing this the Canadian way. And believe it or not, this is actually the best option right now. There isn't too much snow on the lake. So putting skates on is pretty good. It's not just the Canadian gimmick for getting around, pulling the toboggan. Josh does have an e-bike though, so a bit of an advantage. <laughs> have you used any, have you been on, on a frozen lake with an e-bike before? No, I have not. So I'm looking forward to this uh, potentially tragic experience. <laughs> I, treat, I treat my guests well, I gave him the e-bike. It was either that or the skates, but I'm gonna pull the toboggan. But I think we're the first ones on the lake. No tracks seen. First ice is such a good window for the crappies before they get pressure and before they get weird later in the season. Like they haven't seen a bait in months. No. Well, we got a couple kilometers to the spot. I'm on the skates, Josh is on the e-bike. As far as ice fishing goes, we're packing pretty light. We're looking for big slabs, but we've got, we've got some special technology that's hopefully gonna cut that curve, but. Nice. Whoa, whoa. Well, some of the biggest advancements in ice fishing in the last couple of years would definitely be live imaging. It's the hot topic across open water fishing, the bass fishing world, ice fishing. And what we're doing today is probably one of the best uses of this technology. And basically there, every brand has it. This is Garmin, which I think makes the best in this technology. But this transducer does 135 degrees by, I think it's 18 degrees wide. So depending on how you have it oriented, you can see 200, feet out. So typically crappy fishing back in the day, you would drill a hundred holes and try to hopefully drill right on top of them. Now we drilled six holes. We're going to do a spin, see if we can find them. But yeah, we got this thing. It's called the Summit Shuttle. It contains a Dakota lithium battery, all the transducer cord, the black box. It is the computing. Kind of a pig to haul around compared to, you know, your old school flasher, which still has a place. But if you're hauling something anyway, you may as well haul a pig. You may as well haul the pig. And if things go as planned, we'll show you the, the deadliness of this technology. This is what Josh is going to use. Tungsten is very popular in ice fishing these days. Being denser than lead, you can get down quick. You can still have a small bait, small bait that you can work down deep, so. So this little box here, this allows us to screen record. This is what gamers use to record their Fortnite and whatever games kids are playing these days, but it also allows us to record this screen, which is good for learning, also for entertainment right now, so you guys can see what we're seeing and to really understand this technology and the good and the bad of it. There's nothing worse than watching an ice angler sitting in front of a box and going, oh, 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 and you can't see what they're looking at. So idea we drop down here and it's just schools of big pie plates. Okay. Okay, so there's a couple that I would say are probably maybe crappies. Yeah. They're 70 feet that way. So you can see with the line down under the 70, there's a pot of three fish. Look at those two. I'll drop down the I'll drop down this hole. You can drop down the other one. Come on, buddy. Where'd he go? It's just rooting. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Oh, there's there's a couple of fish, so 90 feet. Do we have holes that way? We do have holes that way. We'll go to that far hole out there, Josh. There are fish that you wait for, and they come through, you know, walleyes, pike. Panfish, gotta hunt them down. Should I go sneak attack them? Maybe if you have the flasher, but... Oh, a couple of fish coming towards me, Josh. They are moving fast. Make sure my drag's good. The anticipation, you can see the fish coming in, two of them. Are you on them? No, there's two fish here. Not a good sign, they just swam both swam straight by. Even all the technology in the world and we can't make them bite. 
there are fish just cruising around this basin. So what we're focusing on is just a big old mud basin. It's a mud bowl, collects all the bugs and the invertebrates and all that stuff. And that's what panfish love to feed on. This isn't the only pattern to catch winter crappies on, but up in the north it is definitely the most common. It's so funny how people think if you have live scope, you're just gonna catch the fish. Oh, there it is. Josh is on. That is either the biggest crappie of your life or a pike. Yay. All right, look at that. He's got issues. He's not feeding very well, apparently. Oh. There's a fish. Oh, he just missed it. I think it's that same pike. Oh, this might be a white fisher at Tulaby. Oh, look at that. Nice walleye. Just kidding. Just kidding. I guessed everything under the sun. And it was another pike. Still learning. In the past, there's always so much guessing to what you're looking at in the underwater world. And now with live scope, it just gives you so much of an understanding. Like obviously, obviously seeing the fish bite is one of the cool aspects of it, but it's just understanding how fish travel. If they travel in packs of two or 12, how they react to your bait. You can watch, you can jig a certain way and you can see sometimes they'll get spooked or sometimes that'll, you know, seal the deal. Definitely a pretty amazing learning tool. Nice mark 40 feet up. I can see him swimming towards me. So I'm just gonna wait. There's kind of two options here. I could go pop a hole 40 feet out and try to intercept him. Sometimes that can make some noise and you know, between drilling and walking, you can spook the fish. Or you just kind of hope that he stays on the same direction. In this case, he turned around. That's not what we wanted. I have heard stories of places where there's lots of live scope activity that the fish are shy of it. I gotten into scuba diving in the last few years and uh, I was diving under a boat and 30 feet of water, I could feel just basic 2D sonar tinging off the back of my head. I could feel it and hear it in 30 feet of water. So you gotta think if normal 2D, you can feel in 30 feet of water as a human, I'm sure a fish is way more sensitive to that. Plus the output of one of these deucers is significantly more than your conventional 2D. So that's something to think about as well. I think there will be a time where these fish will get a little shy. You hear stories of guys that fish for largemouth and then when they go shallow, they'll turn off all their electronics so those fish don't feel that frequency, that pinging in the, in the water. Something to think about, that's for sure. My strategy for finding these fish is drilling a hole and doing a spin of the live scope transducer, shooting out anywhere from 100 to 200 feet. Even with this gear, the fish are good at disappearing sometimes. We drilled and scanned and drilled and scanned and just couldn't seem to get on top of these fish. It was definitely becoming a bit of a struggle. There's a big pod. Oh, that's a great pod of crappies. So they're 60 feet out. I think I'm gonna try to go punch on top of them. Still seeing them? Nope. These fish just do not come close. We keep pushing them further and further. Now I'm seeing some 40, 50 feet out this way. Okay, Josh, I think we gotta, I think we gotta pull the pin. The electronics don't lie. It's not like they're swinging by and sniffing at our baits. They're just, the ones we see aren't even coming close. This is gonna do it yet. There's gonna be a big crappie slurping that in before the end of the day, or maybe tomorrow. This would have been a little too much snow to skate through. My thighs are burning. This is, is this it? Is this where all the crappies live? Oops. All right, let's see good things. There's fish. Look at them swimming away. Three of them. Run. Oh, look at all them. Look at those. They're kind of blobbish. So 40 feet that way. That's a good sign. Josh, I think there's some big crappies here. So as I turn this pole, wherever this handle's pointed, that's where my transducer is looking. So I'm doing a swath now. I only got it on 25 feet, but when I zoom out here, I can zoom out. I can be looking 75 feet around. And there I can see there's a ton of fish 65 feet behind me and I do happen to have some holes there. So I'm gonna go tiptoe over there. See if we can sneak up on them. Might be a time of day thing. Might be my angling skills. Lots of questions unanswered. Oh, oh, oh there's things happening. Yeah, 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 keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Oh, they're picking up speed. Oh, oh this looks big. Oh, this looks big. Got him. I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. Yeah! We're on the board, baby! We got a fish! That's a good eating size, probably like 11, 11 and a half incher. We're gonna keep a couple. Almost prime time, we're getting there. Like that? I said it's almost that time, that prime time, where they become dumb and start eating.
three, four. That fish is on a mission. Hopefully that fish appears soon. There he is. There he is. Come on, Big Bertha. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, come on. Keep coming. Keep coming. Got him. Wow, that was a big mark. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of that crappie. Oh my, that might be the biggest one I've ever caught. Look at that absolute pie plate. That's, that's as big as they get up here, basically. All right. Throwing it on the board real fast. The mouth is resting open, but that's over 16 inches with the mouth resting open lately. But we need to put that back because that is an old, big slab daddy. We'll just hold her for a second. Massive. Yeah, buddy. Well done. Oh, man. Crazy. People don't realize how old those fish are. These studies were showing that a fish that big could be 13, 15 plus years old. And you think it's a panfish. It must only be a couple years old, but like the no, thing that's is, a giant fish. you know, I know you'd get good slabs off of that, but we're not eating those. We're not eating those. Yeah, you can the see only, them kind of swimming. The only way you catch 17 inchers is if you release the 16 inchers. And that was a 16 inch crappie. And uh, yeah, that's one of the biggest ones I've ever caught. Huge. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's what did it. A little minnow imitation when people think panfish they think a little jigs like that they think of downsizing tiny little tungstens but we're fishing for big canadian minnow eater crappies and they eat they eat the big stuff i'm fishing with eight pound braid eight pound leader this one's called the frostbite royal flesh it's my favorite big crappie rod that that made the day made the trip i i can't believe that i'm giddy i don't know i, th I think of all fish species probably some of the most volatile in the winter are panfish because when they stack up in these basins some of these lakes will have all sorts of you know arms and then there might be these couple bowls these basins where the fish congregate in the winter that's where they feed and they'll, they'll spend all winter there until spring when they slide up in the shallows and the problem with that is when you find them you can beat them to death because people think that every fish should go in a bucket and the thing is when those fish are so old you need those going back in the system to create those those big fish genes right so that right there just an, uh, an absolute monster. Yeah, man, like from what I'm seeing, it's just you sit and wait and then all of a sudden two, three show up and it's just like, it happens really fast and then they're gone again. Oh boy, that's a big one. Look at it, you could just, you can see, just you can envision the shape of what a big crappie looks like. I think it's a big one. Oh man. Oh jeez. Another giant. Look at the look at the humpback. That fish is just wow. We're on him. I'm just gonna put this back as fast as I can. There might be another one here. Tough to tell. Here's one coming. Josh has one coming. I got one right under me. He's about to eat it. Oh come on. Come on. Got him. Oh man. Oh man, holy smokes, what, what is going on? Look at that, big baits, big crappies. Yeah, 15 and a half, look at that, the size of my hand. Going back to make babies, it is spectacular. You fish all season for a fish like that, we just got two back to back. Oh boy, those are nice looking. Oh, oh, oh Josh, oh, Josh, oh. Josh, get ready. Yeah, oh, oh, oh no, two I of thought. them, two of them, no, you're good, you're good, you'll get one. Ooh, got him. I oh, I lost him. him, lost him. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Look at him swim down. You're gonna oh, get yeah, him. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Oh, no, we screwed both of them up. They're both big. Maybe I'll get another chance. He's coming back. Okay, his nose. Oh, no. Twice. I do not deserve another chance at this fish. Still there. He's coming for you. Bring it home, Josh. Bring it home. Yes. I let him, it looks so big. I let him eat it. It looks so big. It looked just giant. Is it a crappie or is it something bigger? It's a crappie. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wow. Look at that thing. Little sunset kiss. Holy smokes. Yeah, they just move in crazy quick. In this situation, Livescope gave us the confidence to stay in the area until the fish turned on. 
As we mentioned multiple times, as good as this tech is, it still doesn't make them bite. I don't think front facing sonar is going anywhere, but as anglers, it's our duty to use this responsibly. It's now more important than ever for us anglers to understand proper fish handling and selective harvest. We need to throw the big breeders back and keep the smaller ones for the pan. There it is. Nice. Yeah. Got him. They do grow them small here. That's a good eater. You know, 10 to 12 inches is what I like to eat. Well, I guess we'll, we'll call it. Yeah, I don't need to catch another one. Nothing wrong with that. Those were some giants, couple eaters, and uh, I'm glad we didn't give up after the first lake. Day two. So the lake we're gonna go to today will be a bit deeper. So probably, I think we're gonna have to pretty much keep all the fish that we catch. We'll barrow trauma everyone. Yeah, they're, they're not really releasable. It's like 30 feet deep, 33 feet deep. So it's like, we'll, uh, we'll load up for a fry and let them be. What is like the best, not even best practice, but what's suggested in a situation like that where if an angler's sitting there catching one after the other after the other, nonstop, and there's a limit, you're supposed to just catch a limit and leave? Keep them and leave. Not yeah. that you need to catch a limit, but yeah, catch whatever you're gonna eat and then leave. Like, there's been more studies coming out that, you know, even some of those fish that do kick down a bit will float back up after. Like, it's all case by case. I think if you can descend the fish with some sort of device, that helps. But also, if you have to do that with every fish, is like, should you really be fishing for them? Right. I think there's been stories of uh, people hammering fish on a spot and they're like, oh, they kick away, they're fine. And then people coming by and looking with an underwater camera and they spin the aqua view around and they just see crappies pinned up under the ice everywhere. Yeah, that's bad news. A new day, new lake. I think this lake's gonna be a little bit higher numbers. Maybe not that same size, but feeling hopeful. I'm just drilling three. I'm, pre I'm predicting that we're on top of the fish. All right, deploying. Yeah, so the thing about crappies versus some other species, crappies don't have the ability to burp. You fish for white fish, you fish for lake trout, they can burp, they can expel that air when they get brought up from deeper water. But with a crappie, they get the bends, like a scuba diver shooting up too fast. So that's the thing with this technology, you can find the fish in this deep water, but then it's like the ultimate test of your willpower for not uh, keeping over your limit or trying to release these fish, right? It's Totally, yeah, if there's a hot bite, it's hard to leave. And it can happen in shallower water too. It's not just in 35 feet of water, like I've seen it happen in like 25 feet of water. So there's like one or two there. There's something high too, but so 70, 80 feet behind me. Let's just do a little more looking. Oh, there's the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 90 feet. You just see this little blob of goodness. Well, they're 40 feet off. Like those could be crappies and those over there could be crappies too. But I think we should keep moving. 40 feet. Some stuff that way. Uh, there's some kind of right under. I'm just gonna, maybe we should drop on these bumps and see what they're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See if we can ID them. Could be micro perch. Sometimes crappies, when they're belly to the bottom, they're a little bit deeper, they can show up pretty small if they're not. Big old 16 inchers. I think this is good, Josh. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Did we find him? Sweet potatoes. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. I think that's gonna be a good one. It's a slap crappie. Don't horse him. There you go. It's a crappie. Yay! <laughs> so, significantly smaller than the ones we were catching yesterday. Yeah. Pretty little fish, and we can eat that. Okay, here we go, here we go. Yep. Nice, oh, good job. Little dinker. In the water? There we go! We'll take the sides off that. Yep. Another little crappie. That's an eater all day. Mmm. I'm gonna try to get on those. 40 feet, straight ahead. <laughs> These look like crappies. Like that's for sure, crappy. He did come up for it. Oh, oh there's some better ones. Oh my gosh. There's like 30 of them. Right? We just scanned over on the live scope and there's the mother, the mother load. I can drill a grid. I think we'll probably want the live scope here. You're right on him, Josh. Keep dropping. Okay, lift. Lift just a little bit. Yeah, right there. Just hold it there. Okay, he's nose behind it. He should be eating it right now. On him. Oh, a lot dropped him. Okay, stop right there. Another one coming. Okay, start doing the slow rise. Yeah, keep going. 
slow rise. He's gonna eat it in three, two, one. On him. Nice. Great coaching. The countdown. You gotta love the countdown. The countdown's nice. I appreciate that. Okay. Nice little eater again. The crappie. Okay, here we go. Man, we're on the school now. They're charged up. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Got him. Nice. Just, it happens fast. There we go. Nice. Hey! We would not have found these fish with that. Like, we would have just been drilling and drilling and drilling. Oh, there you go. Nice. Look at the other one spook. How cool was that? Yeah, that was insane. Josh set the hook and then went poof. In an ideal situation, you kind of pull them up and you pluck them a little higher, but. There he is. A little better. Yeah, and now the school's gone, just like that. Boom, 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 pluck four off. Nothing to catch. Okay, well, I'm going home. <laughs> what do you want to do? Do you want to go cook right now? It is 12.03, so I'm, I'm thinking that's lunchtime. Yeah, let's eat some food. Let's eat some crappies. Whew, that was good. Did we already talk about the uh, the fact that we're calling this coconut curry crappie? Sorry, what's it called? Coconut curry crappie. I'm a big curry fan and you always find a new way to surprise me with fish cooking. So I think this is gonna be good. Yeah, I think it'll be delicious. This is more of a Thai style curry. You prepped it already. It's just gonna be thrown it on a pan. And yeah, everything's in little baggies. Some of them may have frozen and that's okay because we're out in the winter here. Yeah, but we're gonna make some rice. I should probably get the rice started right now and then- I'll keep cutting. We got a bucket uh, full of crappies. I am not happy with my filleting job, but there will be meat here. We need chunks of meat, so we're good. Chunks, it doesn't need to be beautiful fillets yeah, later. This is one of those things like you could have full fillets and that's fantastic, but it will chunk up naturally as we make this. So we're in fine shape if there's a really poor cleaning job on the fish. So super simple. This is just a mixture of cornstarch and baking soda. So both of those things are really good to get a light coating on the fish. It'll help them crisp up really nice in the pan. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this to the pan. Same thing as if you're just doing a flour dredge. We've got a little bit of this smoked salt. I think it might add a nice little delicious flavor to it. We also have a bit of this in our rice water. Medium high heat, a little bit of oil in there. I've got some canola oil, any kind of frying oil works. It smells good already. It's not really a shallow fry, it's just a pan sear. So we just need enough oil in there to coat the bottom of the pan. We'll do the dredge. As long as it's crispy, we don't have to worry too much about cooking it all the way through because we'll add it back into the sauce and that'll just sort of continue to cook it and finish that off. Yeah, rice is done. Just gonna kill the heat on that. It's looking pretty good right now. We've got a kind of a crispy edge. Do that. I'm gonna get just a bit of oil going. This is our red curry paste. It's crazy, lots going on. Oh, I would eat that straight. That smells so good. It is potent. Oh. So I'm gonna go fairly heavy with it because we're making a decent batch here. Gently cook that and get the coconut milk in there, but not all the coconut milk. We're just gonna put a portion of it in, let this cook, and then let that smaller portion of coconut milk start to evaporate, and we'll turn this into a thick sauce. This will be maybe a two minute evaporation process here. We're just going to let the heat do its job, get rid of some of those liquids in the pan, you know, chunky coconut milk stuff to melt a little bit. Okay, so this is kind of what you want. You want these chunky bits and the oil to separate a little bit from what we've going on here. 
what we're going to do, add a little bit of palm sugar. This is more of a, like a paste. And we're gonna add about a tablespoon of this. It just helps bring some of those flavors to life and sweeten this up a little bit. And at this point, now that everything's getting nice and toasted, flavors and aromas are going crazy. We're gonna take the rest of our coconut milk and just pour it in there. So we could get that other can cracked actually, Jay. And I would say go in with an amount of that. <laughs> Maybe not all of it because as that cooks, it'll start to thicken this sauce. Well, it smells unbelievable, Josh. Okay, so we're getting close. So what I'm gonna do is just, I dialed the heat back just a pinch. I'm going to add this fish in. So this is going to not only finish the cooking process with the fish, but we're just gonna get a nice coating on all of those chunks. Oh baby, that looks good. So here we're gonna go in with our rice. See, we want some nice hearty chunks of crappie on top. And then I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of green chili that happened to freeze on me. These are gonna be spicy. And then we have just a mixture of green onion or scallion and some cilantro. This is it. Wow. You can make adjustments to this. Like if you want it a little less sweet, you could go with less palm sugar in there to your liking. Oh my gosh. That's so good. That's some good spice to it actually. Yeah, sweet. Wow, it's amazing. Savory. It has that fish aroma and the coconut. I'm not saying this for the camera. This might be favorite dish I've ever had. Really? Yeah, it's okay. unbelievable, yeah. Shocking, surprising. It's so good. It's just like, different. And I feel like that cooked down coconut milk adds a bit of that. I don't know. There's something nutty about it almost. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Coconut curry crappie. Dude. Unbelievable. Hey. Unbelievable. Crappie. Look at the crappie fishing brings people together on the ice at the table. The whole, the whole story. Man, that's good. 